and you will make it. This is part three of a, a three-part sermon. This is part three. In parts one and two, I made you aware of some of the obstacles that's been in our way. We went through that. See, if you don't know, you don't know. So the first thing you need to do is to be made aware of what's going on. I'm not going to go back into uh, parts one and two. You know what that was all about? How we've been lied to, how we've been cheated, how we, our identity, everything that belonged to us has been taken away. We also went into the fact that prayer has been taken out of the schools. The Bibles have been taken out of the school. Everything that was meant to help our children and to help us has been taken away. I wanted to make you aware of that first. So what's the solution to all of these problems that's going on in the world? And I know everybody's having some kind of a problem, whether it's health or it might be finances or it might be trouble in your family, on and on and on and on and on. So what's the problem? What's the solution to all of this? First and foremost, I was trying to make you aware. Let's look at the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. And it reads as follows. And you know who this is speaking here? This is God speaking. This is God speaking. He says that my people are destroyed because of a lack of what? A lack of knowledge. This is why I've been trying to give you all, all of this background, all of this knowledge of why all of this stuff is happening. Because our people, God said, we're destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. If we don't Because sometimes when we get the knowledge, we reject it. We don't put it to use. Brothers and sisters, I want you all to know, and I've said this before, that everybody, even this baby here, we were all born with a God-driven purpose. A God-given purpose. And it's just so unfortunate that so many of us go through a whole lifetime and never know what our God-given purpose church and hear the word of God. You won't know any of that. Then it says that seeing thou hast forgotten the law, I will also forget thy children. These are God's words. See, sometimes these young people out in the world, you see how buck wild most of them are? A lot of that is because the adults have forgotten. What does the world say? Forgotten the law of God. What are we doing for God? church should be packed. It should be packed. And I don't know why so many people are not here today, but that's okay. You're here today, which means God chose you to hear this word. You were hand selected by God to hear this word. So I want you to internalize what I'm saying. Still talking about awareness. Now, this is one that God dropped in my spirit. Saturday morning, about 3 a.m. in the morning, woke me up out of my sleep, and I found this scripture here. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 7 through 8. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man, my associate, declares the Lord of hosts. Who's the Lord of hosts? Who's the Lord of hosts? God. So this is letting you know that these are God words. Strike the shepherd that the sheep may be scattered. Who's the shepherd? Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the, is the shepherd and who's the sheep? We are. we are. Jesus is the shepherd and we are the sheep. See, if you strike the shepherd, and what do I mean by striking the shepherd? Remember last Sunday and the Sunday before that we were talking about how they took prayer out of the school. 
They took the Bible out of the school. This is all related to the shepherd. When you took that out of the school, that's a strike against the shepherd. Not only has all of that been taken out of the school, most of us have taken it out of our homes. Right. How many of us teach our children when you wake up in the morning to say thank you, Lord, and to pray? How many of you teach your children before they go to bed at night to get on their knees and pray? strike against who? The shepherd, Lord Jesus. And you see what happens when the shepherd keeps getting struck down. What happens to a sheep? They scatter. Do you all know that God's sheep has scattered? The shepherd has been struck in the government. Y'all do know that, right? Even in some churches, and I won't go off into that, but I know in this church, we ain't gonna scatter our sheep. Just fall them by the wayside. And I don't think they're just talking. 
two-thirds would perish. And like I said, not necessarily a death. You can be alive and be dead and be just as dead, if you know what I mean. Those two-thirds will be cut off. Y'all see how crazy this world is now? I've never seen it this bad before. Growing up as a kid, it was nowhere near this bad. But if you notice, as time goes on, the time gets what? Worse and worse and worse. See? Going to that two-thirds. Going to that two-thirds. But the third will be left. See? Most of us are part of that one-third. But let me tell you about that one-third. Verse 9. And it will bring the third part through the fire. Now see, this is the important part. Those of us who are that one-third, we're going to go through fire. But like I told you before, just because you go through the fire doesn't mean you will be burned. Just because you go through lightning doesn't mean you'll be struck. See, going through fire refines you. Did you know that? It refines you. Just like a piece of coal, before that coal becomes a diamond, it has to go through all kind of rough stuff, all kind of pressure, all kind of fire. But if it survives that fire, then it comes out a beautiful diamond one of the most precious jewels that we have. Let's keep reading. And I will bring the third part through the fire. I will refine them. I just told you that. A lot of times we go through the fire so that we can be refined. I will refine them as silver is refined. doesn't mean that the devil is beating up on you. Sometimes we're being what? Start with a T. We're being tested. We're being tested. Just like Jesus was tested. Right after John the Baptist baptized him, before Jesus started his full-fledged ministry, he was tested. The devil tested him in the wilderness. And you all know the story because I've taught you that. So I'm not going to go over that again. But I just want you to know, if God's son can be tested, who are we? You know we got to be tested. So everything is not all bad when you're going through something. I do know this. All of the trials and tribulations that I've gone through, they were not easy. They were not easy. But I kept trusting and believing in who? Kept trusting and believing in God. Because I just don't believe that God will ever let me just fall flat on my face. If I fall, he's going to pick me up. And when he picked me up, I'm going to try it all over again. I told you a quitter never wins. And a winner never what? Quits. Y'all got to remember that. When I teach you something, I want you to remember because you know I'm going to bring it up again. You know I'm a teacher as well, right? Amen. Hallelujah. So when things are going bad for you, it's not always bad. Sometimes you're being tested. Now I'm going to tell you, every test that I've ever gone through, once I came through the test, I was a better person. I was a stronger person. God elevated me to another level. You know, you have to be tested before you go to any new level. Not just in a spiritual sense, but you know in a natural sense too. Period. Right then? Period. Period. You're going to be tested. Before you can get into law school, you have to be what? Tested. They ain't going to just let you in. Before you go to the next grade level, you have to be what? Tested. And I'm going to tell you, when you're being tested, even in a natural sense, your teacher's silent, isn't it? And your teacher silent when you're being tested? Well, God sometimes appears to be silent too. So don't think he's forgotten about you when you're being tested and when you're going through excruciating trials and tribulations. Just know a lot of times he's just looking at you 
to see if you're going to hold on. Just like Job. You know, we talked about Job. I don't think anybody other than Jesus ever went through as much as Job. But Job kept holding on. Job lost all of his wealth. He lost all of his children. Then the devil inflicted sickness on him. Boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. But he never, ever, ever cussed God. was taken from him. What more can a person take? But Job continued to give God the glory, continued to praise God. And when his test was over, God gave him back double of everything he had lost. Everything he had lost. And trust me, he'll do the same for you. Whatever you've lost, God will give it back to you in double. You cannot be God. Right now, right now. 
so that you can go into college and get a good job or either open up your own business. You have to be educated to open up your business. Ain't no idiot going to run a successful business. So you have to be educated for that. You don't necessarily have to go to college, but you have to be educated. Practical and sensible. This is what it means to be wise. You're farsighted, you're practical, and you're sensible. Verse 3. For when the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take any extra oil. Now here we're talking symbolic now. We're talking symbolism. We ain't talking about no real liquid oil. We're talking about the oil that you get when you come to church. The oil that you get in your vessel when you read the Bible. The oil that you get in your vessel when you listen to the pastor preach the word of God. The oil that you get when you're out here praise dancing. The oil that you get when you're on the band playing those instruments. The oil that you get when you just come to church. God is going to deposit some oil into you. When the foolish virgins took their lamp, they did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil along with their lamps. How many of you got some oil in your vessel today? Anybody clap your hands? That's spiritual oil. Anybody sing? That's spiritual oil. Anybody stump their feet? That's spiritual oil. Anything that you've done today, just coming to church into you. Just come in. But you know the more you do, the more oil you get, right? Verse 5. Now while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off and they fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look! The bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Trouble is knocking at your door. What you gonna do? the power of praise. My name is Dr. Savina Lachelle Taylor and I am the pastor of Unity Mission Church. If
If you would like to support our ministry and help to keep our broadcast on the air, a broadcast that is viewed by a multitude of people, a broadcast that have touched the lives of so many, please send donations to our website, unitymissionchurch.com or unitymissionchurch.org. You may also send checks or money orders made payable to Unity Mission Church to our address 1335 Oakman Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. When you support this ministry, brothers and sisters, you are actually assisting us with supporting the community. We assist with feeding the hungry. We support families with social and economic needs. We provide jobs. We provide a multitude of after-school programs. Our theme is unity in the community. You may send your donations to our website, unitymissionchurch.com or unitymissionchurch.org, or you may send your checks or money orders payable to Unity Mission Church to 1335 Oakman Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. We also so cordially invite each and every one of you to our Sunday morning service, which begins at 11 a.m. Here you can truly witness the power of the Most High God showing up and showing out. We thank you in advance for your support and may God continue to bless you abundantly. In Jesus name, amen. Once again, Nine three nine three one zero. 